Terrestria, and this is a blog, I guess. Real quick, just because Twitter decided they were interested in life in Japan. Uh, this is a sample of a normal trip to a convenience store. Alright. Bottle of water, nothing worried about that. This is an already cooked soft boiled egg. Well, it's not soft boiled. It's like perfectly just before fully hard boiled. This was like a dollar. <laughs> yeah, this video is pretty much halfway about my supper tonight. <laughs> a ginger ale. Also not that weird, except like, there's not that many places that sell ginger ale in Japan, so I went to this convenience store specifically to get it. But somehow it's at every restaurant. Frozen cheese risotto. For the microwave. A giant thing of mixed vegetables, specifically for stir-fry. This was like a dollar. I'm halfway just wowed because stuff in convenience stores in Canada are expensive. Oh, no, no, you're last, my friend. Man, I should have done this as a live stream. It could have been a casual eating stream. A rice ball. This one is salmon. Uh, it's really awesome because of the Olympics. All of the convenience stores are trying to add more English because they're anticipating more foreign customers. So the Lawson's package didn't used to have a picture and didn't used to have English, and now it has both. Whoa. A picture and fresh grilled salmon. Now, one of my favorite things about Japan, and I'll try and show this off in the future, but there is often a correct way to open things. If you try and open it on your own, it might be difficult, but if you do it the right way, it will be perfect. And so, for the good of mankind, I'm going to show you how to open a convenience store rice ball. Also, they totally have instructions. Anyway, you start with one, it's at the top, you pull it down. All the way around. You start with two, and you pull it completely sideways. And you start with three, and you pull it completely sideways. The reason is, it can sit there all day without your seaweed touching your rice. Because once the seaweed touches the rice, it starts to go soggy. But it will always be fresh because of that packaging. So here we have the salmon on the inside. I usually buy the salmon, not the tuna, because the tuna usually comes with mayo, and I don't like mayo. Uh, fun fact, when I was living in Korea, I was on this city bus, and uh, piercings like this are really weird in Korea. So I had this piercing on, and this old man on the bus came over, and he's like, there's something on your mouth, wipe your mouth. And I'm like, what? He's like, there's something on your mouth. And I'm like, no, no, piercu, piercu, which is like Konglish, and probably... English too for piercing but he was so old he didn't he wasn't familiar with the term and he thought it was a piece of kim a little piece of seaweed uh japanese is nori and he literally licked his thumb and started to come towards me and thank god some young korean woman took pity on me and like explained what was happening to him <laughs> all right up next Every convenience store in Japan has, like, not fresh food, but already warm food. Like, you can get corn dogs or little steam buns. And Lawson's is karaage-kun, fried chicken-kun. Uh, comes in a couple different flavors. I got the spicy one today. And it comes in the side of the package. There's a special little thing for the toothpick so you don't have to get your hands messy. Japan hates garbage, but also loves ridiculous amounts of overpacking. 
Oh. Maybe I should have showed that to the camera instead of just shoving it in my face. Red is the spicy one. By the way, this this is like a five piece container and it was like two dollars. It's not spicy at all, by the way. Ninety percent of things in Japan that say spicy are not at all spicy. And then every once in a while you get the spicy because you think it won't be spicy and it kills you. I'm probably not going to like this. Pudin. I don't even know what pudin flavor is. <laughs> so that's great. Um, but I ended up buying it because... There we go. This is Rilakkuma, which is a very famous Japanese mascot. Here it's pudding flavor. Um, but I had to buy it because look at, oh God, look at it. Look at it. It's so cute. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat its head off. I don't know how to open this. Can't smell anything, so it's just covered in fondant, right? I literally have no idea what flavor this is. According to Google, put in is pudding, which is the Japanese name for creme caramel or custard pudding. So this is like a creme caramel mochi thing. Mochi is Japanese rice cake, and they pound it into a paste. And then, for added weirdness, there's the fondant. So it's basically sugar rice with fondant on top. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I wouldn't buy that again, but it was fine. I think this says eat the mascot in Japanese. Oh my god, focus. I'm not here, focus. Tabe masko. Taberu masko. Eat the mascot. There's there's one more thing I did at the convenience store that I can't show you because it has personal information, but I also paid my bills. So I got a cold cake thing, a frozen dinner, a fresh egg already cooked for me, vegetables to make a stir fry, ginger ale, a drink, fresh fried chicken, and paid my bills on one receipt. There's another thing I could do at a convenience store which I didn't do, which is buy tickets. You can buy concert tickets. I think at Lawson you can buy USJ tickets, Universal Studios Japan. That's a stupid little vlog thing where I ate supper. I, I took my new camera outside and did some test footage, so if that's not terrible, then I will have an outside video of life in Japan soon. If you want more videos of life in Japan, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to make absolutely sure you get the videos, you can ring the notification bell because YouTube's a little weird about subscriptions sometimes. And if you want to hear more of my random thoughts, you can follow me on Twitter. It's Arrestria, just like this YouTube channel. Bye! See you next time!